Good morning. Good morning. Announcements are later, but I want to get this out right now. Please remember that next Sunday, the time changes. So, it, it, right, it, it changes earlier now than it did to, to save energy. So, uh, remind everybody of that. If you would all now please stand as you're comfortable and join me in uh, responsibly reading the call to worship. In Jesus Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. This newness is from God, who has reconciled us through Jesus Christ. Rejoice in you, God. Now, if you would all please turn to hymn number 98, we will sing to God be the glory. Difficult situations linger. 
failures from our past linger. We look for your promised newness, but cannot see it. Speak to us again of your new creation. Open our eyes to its presence in our lives. Call us forth to claim this newness, that we may be healed and made whole. Amen. <laughs> As we come to intercede for one another um, in prayer, we uh, I want to encourage you to um, speak the, the name of a person or identify a situation. Uh, I will follow saying, uh, Lord, in your mercy, and we together will say, hear our prayer. Shall we pray? <clears throat> Mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, for the youth of today and the drugs that are so bad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. for rain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the Heston families, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For all the nations, Posturing their armies around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. For marriages and families, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. <coughs> Lord, for our Sunday school teachers who, who guide our children and are a good example for how to live their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, we acknowledge you and uh, your uh, creativity in designing this planet and these bodies that we uh, live in are in awe of your divine plan to um, not just sustain us, but to revive us, to rescue us from uh, the effect of our sins on our lives and Lord, you are our, our Savior, mighty to save. Your name means Lord Jesus. And um, we thank you for your spirit who fills us and gives us wisdom and understanding of your word, as well as uh, strength and courage, uh, peace that passes understanding, Lord. Um, these are all beautiful gifts. Lord, help, help us to focus on the things that are lovely and noble and pure, the 
things that are hopeful and uh, help us to not be critical, help us to uh, avoid um, sarcasm and uh, cynicism in our world today. Uh, help us to be uh, the voice of hope in the world, uh, pointing our neighbors to the mercy of the cross. Now, Lord, as we continue in our time of worship, we ask you to bless the speaking and preaching of the word. We ask you to bless our, our tithes and offerings and, and uh, our songs of praise. For your glory, in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You will find the scripture reading today on page 78 of the New Testament. This is Luke 15, 11 to 32. I think you know this one. The parable of the prodigal and his brother. Page 78. Then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed his pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come home, and your father has filled the fatted calf, because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, and he has been found. May God add his blessing to his holy word. The sermon series... Uh, called Restore continues today. We uh, will be looking at really a key term uh, in the process of restoration in, in relationship 
between humanity and God, and that term is the word repentance and uh, understanding, uh, hopefully, a little bit more of what the term repentance means. Um, and it, it's impossible to be restored uh, until we first put ourselves in a place where we can be restored. Uh, even when we think about the, the old piece of furniture in a garage sale, we have to make ourselves available to be purchased. We have to be, make ourselves available uh, to, be, um, to be restored by the master craftsman before it can, it can begin to take place. And so uh, part of uh, the process of thinking about this term uh, re repentance is uh, we've got to think a little bit, just a little bit, about the term forgiveness. And I want to start by asking you this simple question. When was the last time you forgave someone who didn't ask for it and who behaved as though it meant nothing to them to receive it? I bet somebody comes to mind as soon as I ask that question. It certainly did for me. And I think personally, offering forgiveness to someone who has hurt or offended us deeply is one of the most difficult things humans can do. Not just to be uh, difficult to be expected to do, but uh, or act to, ask to to do, but to actually do it is just very, very difficult. And we become, uh, we, when we come to Christ, we really don't deserve anything. Forgiveness is offered, uh, but never earned, never deserved. We can't get it by asking for it. We can't do anything to get it. Yet Christ has made us it made a way so that this grace of forgiveness can be already present working in our lives before we ever have a thought of seeking it. And asking for forgiveness is not how we receive it. If you don't believe me, try searching for all the times we are commanded to ask God for forgiveness in Scripture. Jesus, there, there really isn't much there, by the way. But Jesus doesn't call us to ask God for forgiveness. Jesus calls us to action. And his first and last words of his ministry, uh, when he was teaching or preaching, his first words were, uh, and his last words were, calling people to repentance. All the people of the world calling them to repentance. He wants us to confess our sins and forsake them, to leave them behind. And that's how God's forgiveness is applied to our lives, not by asking for forgiveness. If anyone needs forgiveness, it's the son in our parable today that we read just a few moments ago. In the beginning of the story, he asked his father for the inheritance that's coming to him, which in effect says to the father, as far as I'm concerned, you are dead to me, I want my inheritance. It's the ultimate, ultimate statement of disrespect from a child to a parent. He is effectively, effectively killing his father in his own heart. He has no appreciation for the life of work his father undertook to acquire his wealth, nor for the father's love for his child, the parent's love for a child. Inexplicably, his father grants his request, though. The son leaves his homeland, goes into another country, and wastes his inheritance on prostitutes and parties. He impoverishes himself by living for the moment, throwing away his future. And finally, when all of his money and his, quote, friends are gone, because they were just there because he had money anyway, right? In desperation, he hires himself out. Literally, the Greek says he, he uh, 
he bonds himself with a pig farmer. The ultimate sign of his uncleanness, as far as Jews were concerned, pork is an unclean meat, and pigs eat anything, and the reason for that is, is that pigs eat anything, food that's unfit for the table, uh, or the stable practically. Uh, corn cobs and even carcasses of dead animals, pigs eat. And he is slopping around in a pigsty, feeding them this refuse. And he's so hungry that what the pigs are eating actually makes his mouth water. It's at this point, at rock bottom, the son comes to his senses. Even at my father's, even my father's hired men eat better than this slop. Maybe if I go home and confess my sin against heaven and against my father, I can go home and at least be my father's servant. I can't imagine in my wildest dream that my father will accept me as a son again, but maybe he will allow me to be his slave. And so then the father, sitting on the front porch in his rocking chair, looking down the road, as he probably did from the day his son left, notices a traveler approaching the house. And it's his son. And boom, he flies off the porch and running to the young man. And when he reaches his son, the father literally throws his arms around his son's neck. And figuratively, the Greek means that he seizes his son's life. He takes up his son's life, where at one point he had released it. And he's passionately kissing his son. What a picture. And the son says, Father, I've, I've sinned against heaven and against you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. And he doesn't have a chance to ask his father even for a job, let alone forgiveness. There are two important points here about the son's behavior and his attitude. First, the son's turnaround is complete already. When he turns to the Lord, or to his Father, he has already completed his turnaround. He has gone away from his old way of life, and he has turned his face toward his Father. He doesn't bring home his prostitutes and his other sinful behaviors and addictions. He doesn't bring home his rebellious attitude. He comes broken empty and penitent. And secondly, the, son, the son's only hope is to be able to serve his father and nothing else. That's his only expectation. Maybe I can serve my father. But the father clothes the young man with a new robe, slaps a ring on his finger and puts shoes on his feet. The robe, rep the robe represents a position of distinction. The signet ring symbolizes the sonship and the establishment of his inheritance. Authority equal with the father. And the shoes signify that he is not a servant, but a son, because slaves go barefoot. The calf is prepared for a feast to celebrate the son's return, and the return of the child is always worth celebrating. The lost heir has effectively risen from the dead. What a beautiful story, isn't it? Every soul on earth can identify with this. And even though I'm not talking about the older son, uh, whether you identify with the older son or the younger son or the father who lost a parent of who lost a child, whose child died but was found, or 
but came back to life, was lost, but is found. We can identify with one of these, every one of us can. When we come to our senses about our condition as sinners, as dead to God, eating from the trough of worldly wisdom, and begin our journey back to our Heavenly Father, He runs towards us. We confess our sin to Him, but He offers forgiveness before we can even ask for it. We do not consider ourselves worthy of being called His children, but He clothes us in purity, innocence, and righteousness of Christ. We may hope to only serve Him, but He fits our feet with shoes, making us His children. He seals us with the Holy Spirit as a guarantee, restoring our inheritance, bearing the signet of God's estate. Sin is viciously destructive. It ruins us to the core. Its power multiplies into many layers of tyrannous death, death. Sin fights against any effort to overcome it. Even the best efforts of the sinner are filthy rags. But once we turn our face toward God like the father ran to son, we take notice that God came to us and dwelt among us. He himself took on flesh in the person of Jesus the Messiah and identified with our humanity. And even as we begin our journey back to God, He runs to us to meet us where we are, recognizing our broken will. Before we have a chance to ask for forgiveness, He restores our eternal inheritance through the one whose name means mighty to save. He opens His arms and He seizes our life in His hands. He prepares the table before us with the food of His great sacrifice. The bread a sign of remembrance of His broken body. The sweet juice of grapes as a sign to remind us of the precious blood He shed in order to forgive our sins. In the United Methodist Church, we serve open communion to anyone who humbly repents of all sin and desires to follow Jesus Christ our Lord. <laughs> Jesus said, let the little children come to me. We welcome parents to bring their children to the altar to enjoy the fellowship meal of the Lord with us. Even though we don't have any little children with us this morning, uh, we certainly do invite those who may be watching on television. We urge parents to teach your children what we're doing and why. So would you join me in the litany of our confession and thanksgiving for the bread and the, and the cup. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. He himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins. And not only our sins, but the sins of all the world. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of your hearts by the conviction of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love. And his wonderful deeds for humanity. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. But he lifted the needy out of their affliction. The upright see and rejoice. But all the wicked shut their mouths. Whoever is wise, let, him, let them heed these things. And consider the great love of the Lord. The great love of the Lord. This is how much God loved the world. He gave His Son, His one and only Son, and this is why. So that no one need be destroyed. By believing in Him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending His Son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. He came to help to put the, the world right again. Anyone who trusts in Him is acquitted. In remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in agreement with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. The Holy Spirit of God now rests on us who are gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. For these elements have been duly consecrated and have become for us the body and blood of Christ, redeemed by His blood. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Body of Christ, broken for you.
vote in, you turn off the light. If you would all now please uh, turn in, oh, uh, Mr. Schultz and Mr. Norton, if you'd help with, I figured you would, probably didn't even need to be asked. If you'd all please join together with me in our offering prayer, as in the bulletin. Bless these gifts, generous God, that they may be used to find your children, children who wander in hunger, children who long to come home. Through our gifts, may all who wander set off for home, and may we celebrate and rejoice in their homecoming. Amen. If the ushers will please come forward.
uh, did this week with Millie's funeral. And the flower, yeah, I was going to ask, I assume the flowers here are from that. Uh, anything else? I had a joy. Good. You sure you want to, you sure you want to tell people? Yeah, okay. I drove to church today. Okay. Joe drove to church today. Joe drove to church today. So that means that uh, Everett's a happy person. Very, very happy. And you said you're going to go see the surgeon this week, right? Yes. Okay. So hopefully Joe will be back to weightlifting and everything she used to do. Anything else? I know that it didn't turn out the way they wanted, but the, the boys' team and the girls' team did their best, and the boys worth, what, two points? Anna, you said? I think it was two points. The boys just lost by two points. It was a hard game. So, uh, I'm sure they're pretty sore and tired after the last few days, but that's a, a joy, and they're probably not real happy. Uh, you want to, no matter how you feel about whatever, uh, Mike Bergen is looking for employment, and I'm sure that was a bit of a shock to, uh, in the middle of the, the, the final sort of semester towards the end of the school year, to be looking for employment. And I noticed we had in here that, uh, wake up Vic, that we still have uh, Jason and Will looking for work. Jan, any, is, is it getting any better at all, or? So, so he's had two interviews last week and one coming up. So keep them in your prayers and keep well in your prayers. Uh, it's a difficult time, I know, for a lot of people. Uh, let's see. We've got, we talked about most of those, but are there any people that we didn't get mentioned, the new format that we should keep in our prayers? Okay. Okay, Dan Bliss is going back to Colorado, some injections in his spine. Some help on the head. Okay, so he's better, but he still needs help or prayers. Yes, Now, Jim. you might keep my friend Ron, who's uh, president of our board for that museum of mine, Ron Culver. Mm -hmm, Ron Culver. Yeah, he, got, he had to have some surgery, and apparently <coughs> Johnson wrote by, he said he's doing pretty good now. Okay, so he's doing that. We've got to try to see what we can do to keep that museum going down there. We've got an awesome amount of displays in there that the public ought to be taking advantage of. Okay, but we definitely. But I depend on him a lot. He's a wonderful. He's got a lot of problems, though, too. So. But he's doing better, you said. Well, he's getting it. Johnson took me by, he called him. He had company in here, but he said he was feeling a lot better. Good. So hopefully Ron will be on the road to recovery and in pretty good shape before he knows it. Now, we do have some real positive stuff. Uh, Jamie, it's your birthday today. Yeah. Well, actually, since you were born in Japan, it was your birthday yesterday here, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We won't ask you how old. Yeah. Okay, how old? 53. Boy, you're young. <laughs> She's just a kid. <laughs> Are there any birthdays or any... Oh, now that's, that's a little ways away. We'll leave you alone for now, Marlon and Don. Anybody we've missed? Well, let's sing happy birthday to Jamie. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
And this is the person Anna said that's up at Peace Church. Where? Peace Church is this person. I'm pretty sure that's who that is. The, uh, Pearson? Yes. Okay. Uh, late ministry school. Now, the worst thing is next Saturday night we get to sprint forward. <laughs> so, uh, since we're having trouble getting here at 845, you know, please just say a little prayer that you can get here when it's really 745. Uh, the photos, I know they still need people to sign up for that. Spring break is coming up. And I know that several uh, groups and members of our, this area are going on various mission, mission trips. I think Eden Valley is going to Guatemala. And there's another group that's going to New Mexico. North Dakota. North Dakota. Anyway, so they're, they're out doing things over spring break, and we, that's great. Uh, Palm Sunday is going to be here in two Sundays from now. So, Anna, anything about that? Well, we're planning to wave the palm branches. Planning to wave palm branches, so we definitely want to get the young ones here. Yeah. The, the 23rd is the UMW meeting at 11.30. I'm assuming that's a.m. Uh, and then we have this Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. Are there any announcements? Excuse me that we have missed. Okay, if you would all please turn to hymn number 130, God will take care of you.
renewed strength, knowing who you are, the sons and daughters of God, celebrated, rejoiced in, welcomed, and dearly loved. Wear your robe and ring with joy. Be glad in God and rejoice, O oh, you righteous.